This question is quite tricky. We're going to compute a, well, we're given a cross product, and then we're asked to compute a different cross product using this cross product. And what we're going to need is the algebraic cross product properties, which comes not from the book, but from the lecture videos. Uh, you can also get it right here in chapter 11 and 11.7 cross product section notes right here. Um, here's a bunch of other stuff if you need it too all around, but we're going to use these properties. Specifically, we're going to use these two distribution properties. So let's look at the first one. What's happening? We're going to distribute u across to v and w, and it distributes in into two cross products. All right, so first thing you should be thinking, oh, well, this isn't a single vector. Yes, but we're going to treat it like that by leaving it in the parentheses and distributing it to each of these. Now, one thing you're going to notice, I do not spend time drawing all these vector symbols over top. It takes too long. All right, so let's go ahead and distribute. Make sure you write in the uh, cross product property, or cross product symbol there, the big uh, X. Okay, so we just distributed. Now we're gonna distribute a second time, but this time we're gonna distribute uh, this vector into the other two. So we'll start here, distribute u like this. So we have u cross u minus 2v cross u. You do need to be careful because if you switch the order u cross v, if you switch the order to v cross u, you pick up a negative sign. So the order is very important and you'll have negative uh, if you switch the order around. It's called anti-commutative. You get the opposite vector if you commute. All right, so the reason I'm saying that, because right here, this is u is on the left, 3v is on the right, so it's u cross 3v minus 2v cross 3v. So we looks like we got four uh, cross products to compute. The last property we have is you can take your scalar and you can attach it to the first vector or the second vector, but you can't uh, move it to both. So what we can do is we can take this scalar and we can move it out front. So two times three is six, V cross V. Move this scalar to the front, three U cross V. Uh, there's really nothing to do here. And there we go. All right, now they still didn't tell us uh, u cross u, uh, <clears throat> except there is a property we can use right here. So if you cross a vector with itself, it's actually quite easy. It's the zero vector. And so we're gonna get, uh, these, we're in three dimensions. So the zero vector in three dimensions is zero, zero, zero. Of course, when we add or subtract that, that won't have any effect. So it's gonna disappear. All right, so what do we do with this V cross U? Well, we know you, we have U cross V. So that means V cross U is negative of what we see here. So it's positive one, zero, positive three. plus three. Now this u cross v, that's already right here. That's the right order. So it's negative one, zero, negative three, minus six times, it's again that zero vector because you're doing a v cross v. All right, we're almost there. We're gonna distribute the two into the vector, the negative two and the positive three into that vector. So we have negative two comma zero comma negative six plus negative three comma zero comma negative nine. All right, last up negative two times, uh, plus negative three. We're just adding these vectors together. 
negative 5, 0 plus 0, negative 6 minus 9 is negative 15. There we go. A lot of work, a lot of using these properties, and I forgot to cover the answer up, but there it is. Luckily we got it right. Nice work.